Jordan Peterson's essay writing guide was one of the most useful educational or even life resources I've ever come across in my life. It's comprehensive yet palatable for an amateur like myself who never formally learned how to write as I did a computer science degree and now I work in software engineering. Unfortunately, I never learned the value of writing until recently. And it's a shame my degree didn't have any writing courses. In any case, thanks to Professor Peterson, his excellent guide is up online for free. And this isn't about me formatting or the structure of an essay, which you could find anywhere. So I thought of summarizing it, hopefully with brevity, for those who don't want to read the whole document. Needless to say, if you truly want to extract its complete value, I recommend going to the original source. Oh, and another caveat, I do know Professor Peterson said he's currently developing an app for the writing guy. So I hope you find some value in this video during the interim period until that app is released. All right, so the guide is a 10 step process. Some parts are obviously more important than the others. Therefore, I'll cover the essential points from each part while also trying my best to get the point across. Part one, introduction. An essay is a short piece written by someone attempting to explore a topic or answer a question. The primary reason to write one is so that the writer can formulate and organize an informed, coherent, and sophisticated set of ideas about something important. In our society, writing well and communicating the best argument is instrumental in living a good life and not being an ignorant, unhealthy lightweight. And maybe this skill is particularly germane to unprecedented times in helping us distinguish between good and bad ideas. For technology, Professor Peterson recommends two high-resolution screens that don't have to be bigger than 19 inches diagonal, and he also recommends a good ergonomic keyboard. And in the use of time, and this is an important point, he recommends writing in the morning after having breakfast. Be prepared to spend between 90 minutes and 3 hours writing, and never wait for time to free up. As Professor Peterson states, you will never get big chunks of free time ever in your life. So don't make your success dependent on their non-existence. Therefore, carve out time in your life and write every day. You will find it very difficult to concentrate, but with time and patience, you will develop that habit. An ancillary point, a great book I recommend on cultivating the habit of concentration and practical advice on finding time to concentrate is Deep Work by Cal Newport. Part 2. Levels of Resolution An essay exists at multiple levels of resolution. Words, sentences, paragraphs, and possibly even more. All these levels should fit precisely within each other to make sense. Generally, a paragraph should be made up of at least 10 sentences or 100 words. This rule might seem a bit arbitrary, but master it before you break it. Rules are there for a reason. You are only allowed to break them if you are a master. If you are not a master, don't confuse your ignorance with creativity or style. A 100 word paragraph should convey a single idea. If you feel like you're rambling on, then either your idea isn't clear or you can break it down further. Beyond words, sentences, and paragraphs, your fourth level of resolution, perhaps the most important one, is getting the paragraphs in proper order. Finally, the fifth level is your essay as a whole. This part is tricky as you can get every other level right, but still fail, as it could just be an uninteresting and unimportant piece. And unfortunately, a critique cannot specifically point out the mistakes, as it's simply the essence of the essay that's failed. Additional levels. Beyond those mentioned lie levels that transcend the structure of the essay by itself, like your audience. So it's important to know who you're writing for. As Professor Peterson's favorite group of people, the uh, postmodernists, understood, an essay necessarily exists within a context of interpretation, made up of the reader and the culture that the reader is embedded in, which is made up in part of the assumptions that he or she will bring to the essay. If all these levels of resolution work together simultaneously, your essay will succeed. Considerations of aesthetics and fascination. While your essay should strive for brevity and clarity, don't forget about beauty. As Dostoevsky famously wrote in his great novel, The Idiot, beauty will save the world. So try and pay attention to the melodic or poetic aspects of your language. When you begin writing, if you feel bored, meditate on why that is, because if you're bored, your essay most definitely will bore the reader too. You could be bored because the topic you've chosen doesn't interest you and you're apathetic to it. Or maybe if you're writing a university essay to simply pass a unit, you're resentful. But that also doesn't mean all fault is with the topic you've chosen or been assigned. As Professor Peterson states, you have to place yourself in the correct state of mind to write properly. You must choose a topic that is important to you. You have to determine how to write about a topic in a manner that is compelling to you. It's a moral, spiritual endeavor. 
On a personal note, as a neophyte, I completely relate to these words, as I began to feel I was doing something profound when I started to approach the craft of writing with reverence. And above all, remember, finished beats perfect. Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. Part 3. The Topic and the Reading List Your essay will be generally answering a central question. The writing process can be divided into two different ways. Either list the topics you've been assigned, or if you have the liberty to pick your own topic, then compile a list of 10 or so questions that you might want to answer. Now start constructing a reading list. If you have writer's block, that's because you have no ideas. So read something. If that doesn't work, read something else and maybe something better. Repeat until the problem is solved. If you don't know what books or articles to read, then start with Wikipedia. For starters, use the reference list for further reading. As you list down your readings, start taking notes against each source and organize them accordingly. Assume you need 5 or 10 books or articles per thousand words of essay. A psychological note and some notes on notes. When you go through your reading list, if something catches your attention, then notice this. Try and understand why this may be and start taking notes. And when taking notes, don't waste time underlying or highlighting chunks of sentences. This is useless. Rather, extract the meaning of what you're reading, at least for yourself, and write it down. Take about two to three times as many notes and words you will need for your essay. Prune and edit later, but focus on understanding at the moment. Then derive about eight to 10 topic questions from these notes. Now choose a topic from the list you've compiled and your readings. Once you've chosen your topic, remember that your first draft should be longer than the final essay, about 25% longer. Part four, the outline. Writing an outline will be the most challenging part of your essay. It'll be the skeleton of your essay and its fundamental structure. Here's an example of a good simple outline for an essay of around 1000 words. As you can see, the topical question has been broken into distinct yet related and ordered sub-questions. But if the essay is longer, let's say around 3000 words, those sub-questions can be deconstructed into further subdivisions. Don't write cliched and dull introductions or conclusions like what you may have been taught in high school general English classes. Even if you do write a stock intro or conclusion, throw it away later. In simple, try writing one outline heading per 100 words of essay length. So a thousand word essay would have around 10 outline headings. Speaking from experience, this is much harder than it looks, especially if you've got too much to say and don't know how to articulate it. Part five, paragraphs. Once you've got your outline prepared, write 10 to 15 sentences per outline heading. That's your paragraph. That'll start building up your essay. At this point, don't become pedantic with the editing. Use your notes, flesh out your ideas and rough out the essay. Be in production mode. Keep the niceties of editing for the second major step. The function of editing is culling and arranging. Therefore, it is better not to mix these two steps. They require different states of mind. Using your paragraphs, you can begin to address the questions in your outline. In the beginning, it is better to tell the reader what the essay will be about and try to grab the reader's attention immediately. Part six, editing and arranging of sentences within paragraphs. Now that you're done with the unfettered production or to be crasser, you've vomited out all your thoughts on the essay, it's time to edit. First, break down your first paragraph into individual sentences like this and rewrite a different version of each sentence under the separated ones. You may find the newer version flows better or is much clearer and more meaningful in getting across your point. Start reading your sentences out loud and see if it sounds awkward. If they do, maybe rewrite them. Go through each sentence assiduously and repeat the process. Afterwards, if the newer version is better than the old, simply replace them in each paragraph. Given you improve the individual sentences in your paragraph now, you could improve their order and structure within your paragraph. Some pruning may be involved here as you eliminate the sentences that are superfluous. Once you've done this process to all the paragraphs, you can compare the newer versions with the older ones and ascertain that the refinements were actual improvements. Part seven, reordering the paragraphs. Similar to ordering the sentences within paragraphs, you have to order the paragraphs within each section. Pretty much repeat the previous step, but instead of sentences, you do it to the paragraphs this time. Also compare them to the subtopics from your essay outline. At this point, you might find discrepancies between your original outline subtopics and the paragraphs you've written. So make the necessary adjustments. Part eight, generating a new outline. After reordering your paragraphs, you produce a pretty decent second draft. However, you're not finished yet. There's more. But wait, there's more. In this step, you fully reorder the essay outline. First, reread what you already have. 
Maybe reread it a couple of times and then put it away so that you can reconstruct your whole outline once again. In this way, you lay down your argument once more, at least the essence of the essay, and you'll probably improve it in the second iteration. However, it's imperative you don't look at the essay you just wrote. Try and make your points from memory. This is where the true distillation happens, making your argument sharp and coherent. Now that you have your new outline, you can cut and paste material from your previous essay onto it. So, the skeleton of your third draft essay is the new outline, but the flesh is still sections from the previous essay. In this process, throw unnecessary material away, get rid of what is substandard and leave only what is essential. And just like that, your third draft is your final essay. Well, not really just like that because this is tedious work, but your final essay is an at least subpar. And once again, speaking from personal experience, you'll actually feel good about yourself for pushing through. Part nine, repeat. Yes, you read that right. Jordan Peterson still believes the essay can be better. So he advises repeating all the previous steps once again if you want an even better essay. And maybe even wait a few days to do this so that you can look at what you've produced with fresh eyes. You are not generally finished until you cannot edit so that your essay improves. Part 10, references and bibliography. Make sure you cite the original sources of all the facts or at least informed opinions you used for your essay. The referencing practices are standardized, so you can pick from a large number of conventions. I recommend using citethisforme.com, it's worked well for me so far. Professor Peterson also recommends a few resources, links of course, to all of these, including the original essay guide in the description. And you're done. So that's how Jordan Peterson writes masterpieces like Maps of Meaning and colossal bestsellers like 12 Rules for Life. I hope you found this video both insightful and succinct. Thanks for watching. And as a person who was never formally taught how to write, I truly am thankful for Professor Peterson for releasing this writing guide for free.